Static pressure waves are not the only environmental impact that the fast tech is dealing with. Another factor is noise. This device is called a spiral array microphone. It has been developed to help engineers counteract the noise created by the fast tech. It holds 114 microphones arranged in a spiral pattern. The device can pinpoint the exact place where a sound originates. The device is used to analyze the sound of an existing Shinkansen train traveling at 315 kilometers an hour. Red indicates places where louder sounds are coming from. This reveals that the nose and the wheels and parts connected to them are making noise. Another source of noise is the pantograph. This is the pantograph now being used on the Tohoku Shinkansen line. At high speed, the bent back portion is struck by the wind and air flows through tiny cracks in the pedestal which causes noise. So a new pantograph design is being tested on the fast tech. The components of the pantograph pedestal that were causing noise have been made solid and the bent back portion has been eliminated. So let's compare the sources of noise on current Shinkansen trains with those on the fast tech. The improvements to the shape of the pantograph were successful in reducing noise energy by 50%. Railway companies are now using this method of pinpointing the sources of noise to reduce them even further. The fast tech has been undergoing trials for some years now, and I'm confident that the development process will help us to bring the noise down to an acceptable level. But noise reduction is a never-ending challenge. You can't eliminate it. The best you can get is an acceptable minimum, and it seems to get harder and harder. So we need to continue doing research and development. Noise problems are a very serious matter for people who live along a Shinkansen line. So the best we can hope for is that the countermeasures will become more effective. Hmm, that's quite right. Japan has very densely populated urban areas and Shinkansens run through most of them. And that's a fact that can't be changed. So it is very important to mitigate the various environmental impacts as much as possible. It's no exaggeration to say that this is the key to creating higher speed bullet trains. With aircraft, there's an equivalent problem with the creation of so-called wind noise. In fact, the problems faced by aircraft and bullet trains have quite a few elements in common. So what works in one case may be helpful in the other. And my hope is that engineers in both fields can pool their knowledge in the search for solutions. Well, that kind of cooperation could lead to useful breakthroughs. Today we've been looking behind the scenes at the development of the next generation Shinkansen and the quest for faster speeds. Dr. Nagase, what do you see as the next areas for development of tomorrow's Shinkansen trains? Well, first of all, I think safety. That should always be the top priority. When you're talking about traveling at high speed, carrying large numbers of people, the safety is paramount. I think that view is shared throughout the industry, and I hope that all railway executives believe it, not just with respect to high speed rail, but all rail. Another issue is network growth, particularly the extension of Shinkansen lines to Hokkaido and to the Hokuriku region, where snowfall is extremely heavy. Tracks serving these regions would encounter more snow than in any place so far served by bullet trains. Running at high speed, a great deal of snow can become stuck under the train cars. And when the train emerges into a warmer area, one thing that happens is that the snow can fall off the bottom of the cars onto the gravel, which is laid as ballast on the track. Well, this might not sound especially important, but it can cause the gravel to fly up and damage equipment on the train's underside or break the glass of windows. 
This kind of thing has already happened again and again. And there are even occasions when incidents of this kind can affect people living or working along the track. Well, that might sound unlikely, and I accept that such occurrences are rare, but they do happen. So, one of the major obstacles to extending the Shinkansen network is figuring out safe and effective ways to deal with snow. I hope that the people involved will continue to develop countermeasures. Dr. Suzuki, where do you think we go from here? Well, with both aircraft and bullet trains, higher speed is what engineers dream about. The will to make the Shinkansen faster has always been there. But today we've heard about how speed is not the only thing. The effects on the environment and the comfort of passengers must also be taken into consideration. I hope that it will never be technology for the sake of technology, but technology for the sake of people. Yasu-san, what was it like riding on the fast tech? It was fascinating. Okay, I just got to experience a test run, but they were actually doing all kinds of testing. They run tests night after night. Behind all the developments we've heard about, there are the engineers who make all the efforts and actually come up with the specific improvements. I really respect them. Indeed, and I'm sure we are all looking forward to the day when technological innovations and improvements add up to trains that serve the needs of passengers and the people who live along the lines. Dr. Nagase, thanks for joining us today. Well, that's it for Science Zero. See you next time. Goodbye. Goodbye. NHK World.